Hey guys, come on downstairs, bringing to you another episode of Career Mode Las Vegas. It's Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is job number three, and uh, this is a little series we're putting together. Give ourselves some direction in this flight simulator, which is an otherwise directionless game. So we've made up a little game mode and some uh, ground rules. You can see our ending balance after job number two is $65,800.64. And we took a mine inspector up to make an accident report in Ely, Nevada. Had a hard time with the runways up there. Learned a few things about uh, setting the compass and uh, aligning the compass. Which uh, kind of messed us up because our compass wasn't aligned. So we basically flew up there in zigzags. And uh, But we learned a lot. So hopefully we can improve upon our pilot skills after that uh, kind of a fiasco nearly crashed um, at the airport all right it is december 17th 8:54 a.m we are stationed here in north las vegas airport in north las vegas nevada the briefing for job number three the hospital in lake havasu city is short on naloxone winter break is here and the unfortunate reality is that they will need it to save lives get a shipment to them stat all right, if you're not sure what naloxone is, it is the uh, drug overdose reversal medication. So when somebody ODs, um, naloxone can save their life. So we are going to bring a shipment from Las Vegas down to Lake Havasu City, Arizona. That is our job for today, job number three. And yes, we are just making up these jobs as we go. Um, just trying to make a simple reason why we're flying where we're flying. And I laid out some ground rules in uh, episode number one, if you want to go back and watch the beginning of that to uh, understand what we're doing here. All right, I weigh 226. If I could stand to lose about 40 pounds, that would be nice. And uh, we don't have a passenger, but I made the mistake of adding the weight of the naloxone in to the uh, front passenger box here. So it actually put a passenger in the plane with me from the outside view, from the cockpit view, you can't see anybody. So, but from this view, there's a guy sitting in the passenger side. Obviously the uh, cockpit view here, can't see anybody, can't even see yourself. Well, let's get this uh, Cessna 152. A used Cessna 152 is our first plane we bought it for $45,000. We'll get it fired up. Looks like another great day to fly outside. We should have had our beacon already going. And we'll get our nav frequencies in here. Again, this Cessna 152 doesn't have autopilot, doesn't have GPS. It's pretty old school. Enter our course in here. We're heading south, so it's a course of 158 that we're looking for. set our nav 2 to the second VOR we'll be tracking and that course we're going to want will be 111. North Las Vegas Airport information Oscar 
Okay, we'll be taking off runway 12 right for the first time so far in this series. This guy's pulling into the ramp parking spot pretty close to where we were at behind us. It is, I don't know, what is that, a beach, Beechcraft Baron maybe? Something like that. All right, so we got to cross runway seven. So I finally have programmed ATC buttons into my yoke, so I don't have to take my hands off the yoke to bring up the ATC. It's actually not a yoke either. I call it a yoke because the Cessna 152 has a yoke, but I'm using a, a flight stick that I got for uh, because I've been flying commercial airliners, mostly Airbus. So that's that's why I got that, but I'm calling it a yoke because, as obviously you can see at the bottom of the screen, our Cessna 152 has a yoke. But it's not really a yoke; it's a flight stick. So I'm making it work for these smaller planes that have yokes, and if we ever fly a Boeing, they have yokes too. So, all right, we cross runway seven. Approaching runway one two right. North Las Vegas Tower Cessna Bravo Golf Tree ready at runway one two right departure to the west. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree altimeter three zero decimal two two wind calm west departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway one two right. Cleared for takeoff runway one two right Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. Landing lights on for takeoff. No, I, startup and testing and all that, I did kind of an abbreviated version here. Later on in the series, I'll go through, or I'll uh, yeah, do more of an official startup and pre-flight uh, routine. This one was pretty abbreviated, mostly from lack of knowledge, but... I've learned it better now. I can't remember what episode it, s it starts in where I actually learned the proper way to uh, do the Cessna 152. So this one was a super abbreviated, we're on the runway, we're ready to take off. Should be rotating around 55 knots. There's 55. Again, I gotta set my trim better because I think I was rotating around 55, but it took a pretty good tug back. To get this nose off the ground. All right, so I think if I remember correctly, we were departing to the west. Have it. We're going uh, out to the west. Las Vegas Tower, Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, continue for west departure. We head south to Lake Havasu City. So my thought here, and it's it's hilarious looking back at it now, because I didn't really know, but my thought here was like. Because McCarran International Airport is just on the other side of the, the skyline that you see there, and we're heading south, basically right through the traffic of McCarran, <laughs> and this is ridiculous now that I think about it. I mean, it's so, I don't know, it's counterintuitive and probably a good thing. I'm not a pilot if I use this kind of judgment all the time. Um, but my thought process here was because planes are taking off I don't know which way they're going today but if they're either taking off towards the west or they're coming in from the west whichever way my thought process was let's head out to the west and stay low underneath the mountains 
stupid. I'm an idiot. I don't know. I don't know what I was. I don't know why I thought that. I. I mean, I still don't know for sure. But my guess is they're coming into land. You probably want to gain altitude quickly and get up above them, rather than being close to the ground below them. I think that sounds stupid. I don't know what I was thinking. But that's what we do in this in this flight here. Total total uh, amateur move, I think. So we head clear out to the west by those mountains, but we don't gain altitude on purpose. Don't gain altitude on purpose. We head out to the west, and then we like stick right close to the mountains underneath them. I don't know what I was thinking, guys. But it does give it does give us some being a game and all. It does give us some good views of the city and uh, of the neighborhoods and stuff out that way. There's some pretty nice neighborhoods that look like. I, th I believe that's out like towards Summerlin, the golf course area out that, that way. Look back towards the city, the strip. A little bit hazy, but otherwise pretty good conditions to fly in. Here in Vegas, uh, I've done several flights already from Vegas. I'm way ahead of where I am um, as far as making Vegas commentaries go. So I, I've done like 16 jobs, I think, Las so Vegas far. Approach Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is type Cessna 152 5 miles southwest of North Las Vegas, 4,300 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, Las Vegas Approach. So at the time of this recording of the commentary for this video, I've actually completed 16 jobs in the Las Vegas area, and most of them are under really good weather conditions, which you'd expect. Did you copy? Squawk 4214 Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. So, I mean, you would expect pretty good... So you'd expect pretty good conditions from Vegas. Clear and that's what we got. Bravo airspace, Cessna, Bravo Golf Tree. Except for a few times. Spoiler alert, there was a couple of days that were pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. Well, maybe just... I don't know. Yeah, weather was pretty optimal except for a couple of the jobs so far of the 16 that I've done. And I think I'll do Vegas jobs through the month of December. And then when January hits, I'll find a new home base and start doing jobs out of somewhere else. So we continue to build up our savings to buy another plane and add to our fleet. I'm also still working on a price list for all the planes that I have in uh, Flight Simulator. Uh, all the stock ones that came with the program, as well as several ones that I've um, add-ons that I've purchased such as the Kodiak and uh, also uh, just purchased the Beechcraft uh, V35 Bonanza plan on purchasing like the Vision Jet and stuff like that so we'll have a pretty good amount of planes to uh, choose from once we start making some real cash start making some money so we're heading kind of southwest here towards those mountains stupidly staying low staying low fly low and slow flying low and slow I should say but these neighborhoods out here if we can somehow get a look out our window to the left I swear I look at some point here because I remember that thinking man these are probably some nice houses out in this area oh there we go they look like they're pretty good sized houses 
look like some nice neighborhoods out here. This would be what, like the southwest area of Las Vegas? Like at this point, at this point, I should be like approaching 10,000 feet probably. But here, where am I? Just almost 4,000. Frequency change approved. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. Like I'm probably 1,500 feet above ground level is all. Probably not the best. Approach Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. Idea. Is Cessna 152.10 miles southwest of North Las Vegas, 3,900 feet. Yeah, 3,900 feet. Following. I Cessna think Bravo ground Golf level is probably. I don't know, 2,600 about here maybe. So we're about 1,200 feet above ground level, if that. Giving us some nice Squawk views of the neighborhoods street, though. Seven Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. So we are almost, almost, um, on our line to track that VOR Roger, radio. And I think we come down a ways west of Lake Havasu City and then cut back to the east. In subsequent videos to this, I'm a lot more detailed on uh, the instruments that we're using and the routes that we're taking and that kind of stuff. Maybe more technical than I was on this video. It's always a process. The first few videos of a series always suck, but somehow I slowly, I slowly start to uh, put together some pretty solid videos that um, are more informative, make more sense. Like I just, I get better at the process. All my sports series that I did were all like that. The first few videos were kind of experimental and I start to get a process and a routine down. So you know what to expect from the videos and I know how to put them together in the, you know, the most, I don't know, sequential way, I guess to make the flight feel uh, fluid and to make the flight all connect. These first three, these first three or four, maybe a little bit chop, a little bit choppy, a little bit all over the place in some ways, but I promise they do get better. They do get better. They do get better and more accurate. I mean, I'm not a pilot but I have taken it upon myself to learn some things beyond where I am at now in this particular flight. So while I can't guarantee that they're going to be perfect down the road, they are much better and much more um, true to life, I guess. Some, you know, closer to what you would see from an actual pilot than these first few were. Still not perfect because I don't know everything but I've learned some, so I'm getting better. It's a nice view of the strip there as we've kind of circled around it. Lake Havasu, pretty big uh, spring break party spot for us since it's December 19th, it's winter break. And we're gonna head down Lake Havasu is on the Colorado River, I believe. A little bit south of Laughlin. I've been to Lake Havasu once in my life, I think. I was quite young though. I was probably 12, 13, something like that when we, my family went to uh, Lake Havasu. My cousin grew up in Las Kingman. Vegas approach Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, 4,800 feet. Cessna 
Vespa Bravo Golf Tree, Las Vegas, approach altimeter tree zero, decimal, two two continue as planned. So my cousin grew up in Kingman, Arizona, and we visited him two or three times while I was growing up. And one of the times we visited, Las I think Vegas we went to Lake Havasu. Bravo Golf Tree. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, Las Vegas approach. Clear to the Bravo airspace. Okay, I think we've gained a little bit of altitude. We're up above 5,000 now. So I think we're starting to climb a little bit now that we're past past uh, the, Mer the McCarran uh, runways. We'll skip ahead a little bit. So we're down south of Las Vegas. And... Uh, on the other side of the eastern mountain range that runs down through there. So like to our immediate east over the range you see out on the left side is probably a little bit south of Henderson. I don't know the Vegas area way good. Okay, so we have definitely gained some elevation when we skipped ahead a little bit. We went from about 5,000 feet up to 9,000 feet. So we're up at a better elevation for cruising now. We head south down kind of along the uh, California-Nevada border. In fact, I think we're probably on the California side once we get down here a little ways I think is the border of the Colorado River I don't know for sure and I'm not 100% sure why I oh we oh, okay so we're tracking our second we're gonna turn here because we're moving to our nav 2 nav 2 instrument and we're going to track that we're right on line with that so you can see our nav 1 the needle moved all the way to the right but our nav 2 is dead center so we moved on to that nav 2 so we are off to the east of Lake Havasu and now we are heading back towards or sorry we are on the west side of Lake Havasu and now we're heading back towards the east towards uh, directly at Lake Havasu And I think more towards, I think the VOR that we're tracking here is actually closer to Laughlin and then we turn and head south away from that VOR. Again, in the subsequent videos, I would know exactly because I made more detailed video. <laughs> this one, I, I can't remember what I was doing and I haven't shown myself through the way I chopped this thing up. Again, I love flying in the desert. Aside from nice weather, the scenery is awesome. The colors are really cool. Again, it doesn't do it justice on my my basic Elgato capture card, but the colors fantastic flying over the desert. The shadows. All the different hues of red and yellow and brown and green at times. In fact, I think it's going to be job number seven that we'll have coming up that is probably my f favorite scenic flight. And I'm not going to mention where that is. That's just going to be a surprise for y'all. But I thought it was a super pretty flight. 
This one's pretty nice too, though. I'm probably a little bit different than a lot of people that play Flight Simulator. Like, a lot of people that play Flight Simulator, I'm sure they are, like, aviation geeks and just, like, totally geek out at the airplanes and the instruments and all that kind of stuff, which I like, okay. But I think the main thing for me with Flight Simulator is the map. <laughs> like, the whole freaking world, man. The whole world. And I've always been, like, I don't know, not obsessed, but I've always liked, like, geography and knowing where everything is and um and i've always been curious what everywhere looks like so this is a way for me to just kind of explore what i would normally i mean i'll pull up google maps sometimes when i'm bored and just look around random places zoom in zoom out what's over here what's over there Like, where is the capital city of this state located? What's this river? What's this mountain range? What's this lake? Like, I like that kind of stuff. So I'm probably... I'm more like geography. I'm more into this game because of the geography than I am the airplanes. But I still love the airplanes and flying too. There's no question about that. It's just that... A lot of these, you know, aviation geeks could care less about the geography and they just want to play with the planes. And I'll play with the planes to a degree, but I care a lot about the geography and exploring, I guess. closer we get back over here towards the Colorado River, the more you start to see some farms. Taking advantage of some irrigation. Okay, so we're still following the uh, NAV2 instrument, which is um, below the NAV1 instrument. It's the little green word that says NAV on it. We've got to move back a little bit to the left. The wind is kind of blowing us off to the right. Which is different than the first two videos. The wind was blowing us to the left, but... Well, as far as last video goes, we were heading north. So the wind was blowing us west. Here we're heading south, so the wind is again blowing us west. Okay, so you can see in between the farms there, I believe that's the Colorado River running down through there. Coming down from uh, the south of Lake Mead. And we're heading into the Laughlin Bullhead City area. Unless that was it up, up to the north there. I don't think we've hit Laughlin Bullhead City yet. I think it's, yeah, I think it's still right here. Just, a, yeah, across the river on the other side there. And the American West is just so vast and open. Okay, so there's the Laughlin Bullhead City area right ahead of us. And then further down... So further down the Colorado River, you can see just, just to the right of where our Cessna label is, that is Lake Havasu, so we're getting there. 
we are getting there. In fact, let's see if we can uh, check out their weather here. All right, so the wind at, in Lake Havasu is coming out of the north at seven knots. So what is that? What Kilo nine, nine India, or ten India miles an hour, something like that? Tree, one niner miles northwest, nine thousand nine hundred feet inbound to land runway tree two. Okay, so we're nineteen miles away from Lake Havasu City Airport, and uh, nearly at ten thousand feet. So we got to drop quite a bit here. And we'll be landing on runway 32. We've got our compasses all aligned now, so we shouldn't have any crazy uh, misinterpreting runway information like we did in Ely. That was a that was kind of crazy. Just about had us crash our airplane. That would have cost us what forty five hundred dollars was the ground rules. If we crash, we cost us forty five hundred dollars in a piston airplane. I think the ground r rules were uh, forty five hundred dollars for crashing and a plus one wear and tear on the plane and we made the rule that if you get to 10 wear and tear then your plane is base is totaled i know that's it's probably not i mean it's that's not it's not totaled in real life but for the sake of the sim and punishing i i don't foresee crashing an airplane five to ten times i don't foresee that but I have crashed before, I'm not going to lie, like, and I will show it, I'm not out here to prove I'm a perfect pilot, and so I'm, like, only going to show you perfect landings. Get, yeah, after that last video in Ely, you know that's not the case. If I was out here to prove how great of a pilot I was, I probably would not have shown you that fiasco up in Ely that we did in the last episode. But no, you're going to see it all. The good, the bad, the ugly. If I crash, you're going to see it. You're going to see the crash. It has happened. Like, it's more likely when I'm getting used to an airplane. Once I'm used to an airplane, it's probably not going to happen unless it's weather related. Like, we get disoriented in the clouds and run into the side of a mountain. I'm most likely not going to crash trying to land. There could, when we challenge ourselves with some really short runways, there might be some runways that I overshoot. Most of the time, unless there's trees or buildings or something we can run into, that's not going to end in a crash. It'll just end in a land off the runway, which our ground rule was half of the uh, crash fee. So actually, I think it wasn't 4,500. I think it was 5,000 for crash. 5,000 for a crash, 2,500 for landing off the runway, and 1,000 for bouncing on landing. Those were our ground rules, at least as it pertains to this Cessna 152. All right, there's Lake Havasu, guys. Lake Havasu City is just off to the left of the lake. Pretty good-sized little city. And the runway is just north of the city, so we're going to lose some altitude and then uh, basically end up, I, don't, I didn't do this on purpose because I didn't know the traffic pattern like I do now, but we're basically going to kind of enter on, I mean we're, far, we're too far away to probably be considered downwind out over the lake but 
we kind of enter uh, on base, left base. I don't know. There's, I think that's the airport just through our side window. So I, I mean, this this could be considered downwind. I'm a little bit high though. You want to be about a thousand feet off ground level when you fly the traffic pattern, I believe, from what I've learned. And I think we're still quite a ways up here. We are at 6,700 feet, almost. Kilo Hotel India, India traffic, Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is on downwind runway tree two. So we're calling this downwind anyway, I guess, even though we're like, we're way higher than we should be. But we head off to the right out over the lake and bleed off a lot of altitude and then come back to the north to land. So, I'm not flying a true traffic pattern here whatsoever, not even a good one at all, but it is what it is on these early flights, and it doesn't mean I'm going to fly perfect ones later either, but I fly better ones. <laughs> fly a little bit better. Alright, let's decrease some throttle down. Around 2,000 RPMs. Drop an altitude at about 1,000 feet per minute. Still have quite a ways to come down. The airport is going to be off to our left. Try to get this shipment of drugs to the hospital down here. That was the job for today. So we're still way high. We're way high. I'm guessing Lake Havasu is probably right near sea level, most likely. In, in later episodes I'll probably know the elevation of the airport more than I do I mean I knew the elevation of the airport when I flew this I just didn't record it so that I would know it when I'm doing commentary right now whereas in later videos I think I probably made it apparent so that when I did the commentary I would know I think in most of them we'll see we'll see if I've remembered to do that I'm sorry if you can hear my kids in the background. They're being kind of loud right now. I'm trying to bribe them with ice cream to be quiet. They've had their lunch. And we're trying to get through this. They are, uh, the oldest is four, the youngest is two and a half. And so trying to keep them quiet is not always successful. And our house isn't huge. We're just renting a small house right now. So they're basically on top of me and I'm trying to keep them quiet while I do commentary and sometimes I fail. And that was my little boy that you just heard. Hopefully we can get the last 10 minutes of this in without the house totally erupting in chaos. All right. We have come down quite a bit. We're uh, approaching 3,500 feet. Still pretty high. But we're gonna come down, circle out around the north end of the city. Try to put this plane down Collect our paycheck. Kilo Hotel India India traffic Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is on base runway tree two. Okay, we're starting to turn on to base now. We're gonna collect our imaginary paycheck, deliver our imaginary medications. Turning on to base, 
One of the drawbacks of the Cessna 152, um, A, a lot of VOR stations are shutting down, are being uh, dis discontinued, and are uh, no longer functional. So navigation's a little more difficult. Also, quite a few runways are starting to rely more and more on just GPS approaches. And uh, Lake Havasu City only has GPS approaches. There's no ILS approach. kind of jumped the gun there. We're not quite on final. Really should know where I am before I do that. Jeez. Practice makes perfect, I guess. Well, not perfect, but better. Had plenty of practice. So the terrain underneath us is actually gaining in elevation as we head this direction. Got to be a little bit careful of that, mindful of that. So your elevation above ground level is going to drop pretty quick. Dropping a little bit, 300 feet per minute. Back up to like 100 feet per minute. Back down to like 700 feet per minute. All right, we're all over the place. All right. Here's our runway, straight ahead. No instruments involved in this landing whatsoever. There's no GPS on this plane. Airport doesn't have an ILS runway. So it's 100% visual. If we did not have the visual on the runway, we ha would have had to uh, find the nearest airport with an ILS approach or a visual or a visibility good enough to find the runway. And I, I should have pre-planned that just in case, which is something I learned down the road as well, the hard way. Always have a backup airport in mind that either has an ILS approach or the weather. Now you can't, I guess you can't even really rely on the weather not changing in the uh, hour or two that you're flying there. So uh, theoretically, I think you'd want to find one, the nearest ILS approach and have enough fuel on your plane to get there if you can't land at your desired destination. Okay, we're coming in for our landing here in Lake Havasu City. Complete job number three. Runway 3-2. And we're coming in a little bit hot here. We're coming down about 200 feet per minute, but we are coming down a little bit fast. And we bounced. Holy crap, dude, we bounced like crazy. So there's your bounce. I told you in episode number one that that wasn't a bounce. That was just a little, a little nick of the tires. This though, my friends, this was a bounce. We just bounced down the runway. That was pretty bad. So that's going to cost us. So we get punished for bad performance on that landing. And hopefully we're a little more careful in the future. And are closer to 50 knots instead of like 58, which is about where we were at when we touched down there. 
But we're down okay. We didn't crash. We didn't land off the runway. We did, however, bounce, which is not good. But we got our shipment down here to Lake Havasu City in one piece. All right, we get to our, our parking spot here. I love how they always have these guys with the, uh, I don't know what they're called, the little baton things. <laughs> and they, uh, they're never actually guiding you into an actual, into an actual um, designated ramp parking spot. So I'm just going to ignore him and park where I want to park. I'm going to park however, however I want to park. I think is backwards probably. All right, we'll get this in here and see how we did for this trip. Job number three. Job number three of 16 so far. And I think there might be 17 or 18 total in the Las Vegas portion of this of this series. Okay. Get her straightened out right here. Shut her down. Quick version of the shutdown. Okay. Cut the mixture. Turn off the fuel valve. Shut down the electronics. And you could probably hear my kids show in the background. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to keep him quiet for like two more minutes if I possibly can. Okay, so we used 7.86 gallons of fuel. And uh, then we'll times that by two, I believe, for our return trip that we're estimating. Quick look at Lake Havasu City. And then we'll get to our, uh, our balance here. I could have been a lot more organized on the layout of this video and hopefully um, in the coming videos I'm a little bit more organized in it okay we are just about to our balance sheet let's check that out like three two one and a half and here we go all right Okay, our starting balance was 65,800. We earned 6,600 on 132 nautical miles. Our fuel cost for 15.72 gallons of Avgas was 188.64, and a repair fee for our bounced landing was $1,000. Our ending balance after job number three is $71,212 on the nose, and that is what we will have going into job number four. In job number four, We'll be flying from North Las Vegas Airport to Mesquite for a day of golf. Not for us, for our, our imaginary client. All right, that's it for uh, Las Vegas Career Mode Job Number 3. It's Mama's Basement. Career Mode Las Vegas on Microsoft Flight Simulator.